to the comments section. I'm Brett Cooper. I'm sure we all know those claims about working out that are going around social media and have been for the last year. So I've done a couple of episodes about these, but you know, if you go to the gym, you are apparently fat phobic. If you care about your figure, then you also hate fat people. If you enjoy gym culture and working out, you are most likely a scary alt-right person, or you are being indoctrinated by one of those crazy conservatives that cares about their health. God forbid. We're going to talk about another layer of these ridiculous claims. Before we do though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you've not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off the clock episode. Okay, so everything that I just said is 100% true. I'm not saying that I agree with it, but those are things that people actually believe. Like this is from MSNBC. Pandemic fitness trends have gone extreme. Literally white supremacist latest scheme to valorize violence and hyper masculinity is gone digital. I have an entire episode about this thing. You guys can go watch it. We can link it below. Another one. This study linking gym bros to right wing beliefs is legit. And then of course we have people making videos like this. And every time I sort of talk about this subject, I go on TikTok and I'm always worried that I'm just going to find the same videos, but there's always more because they're always making more of these. Anti-fat. That includes being thin. That includes gaining muscle so you can look toned and have less fat on your body. So yes, if you work out strictly for appearance-based reasons, you are fat phobic. They're all so angry, all of them. They all look just miserable and upset. Here we go. I'm not fat phobic. I just don't want to be fat. That's not how it works. No, seriously, I have no problem with fat people. I think they're beautiful. I'm all for body positivity or whatever. I just don't want to be fat. Actively not wanting to be fat is fat phobia. And therefore, you're fat phobic. Again, there are so many of these videos. Here's the last one. When people are fat phobic on this platform, you should be uncomfortable. You should be uncomfortable. Okay, I am uncomfortable. <laughs> It is irresponsible to come on an app where there are vulnerable young people. You know, it's also really irresponsible around young people to be overweight and glorifying obesity. I don't know. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> That's also not great to show vulnerable young people screaming in their faces about how if they want to work out and be healthy, then they are actively being fat phobic. That also could be problematic for impressionable young minds. Now, nine times out of 10, I can blow off these claims as ridiculous and we get to laugh about them because, oh my God, look at that stupid Vice article. Oh my God, what is MSNBC doing today? This ridiculous TikToker, ha ha, this is so funny. But then I see articles like this. Author claims that the desire to be skinny promotes white supremacy and the patriarchy. Like they are writing legitimate books about this. This is not just some TikTok fad. This is what academics believe. Somebody commented and said she has to justify all those donuts somehow. Why aren't you on a diet? Because I like to eat. Is that such a crime? Somebody else said, love me some ladies on the white supremacist diet. Guys, the fatter you are, the less white supremacist you can be, the more of an ally you are. So let's just all keep on eating. Let's just indulge in some excerpts from this article. Author Virginia Soul Smith told NPR's Fresh Air podcast that the United States society's desire to be skinny and adversity to fatness can be traced to the end of American slavery as a way of preserving out of touch white beauty standards. Quote, the thin ideal is definitely a white ideal. When we trace the history of modern diet culture, we really trace it back to the United States as the end of slavery, Soul Smith told the host. While promoting her new book, Fat Talk, Parenting in the age of diet culture. Parents do not buy this freaking book. You might think, ooh, this book could be interesting, trying to combat childhood obesity. Maybe I need to pick this up. Do not, do not be tempted. Also, a little reminder, this is just a classic case of a white liberal trying to get progressive brownie points. She is white. And honestly, she's kind of being backhandedly racist by saying that being fat is a black thing, that being thin is a white thing. That's pretty racist. That does that sit well with anybody? No, I don't think it is. No. Also, I went to her website to get more information about her and the book, and this is the current homepage. Again, this is why, parents, you should not buy this book or anything like it. Fat Talk, Parenting in the Age of Diet Culture. An explosion of the myth of the childhood obesity epidemic, Fat Talk gives parents and anyone with a body strategies for unlearning our biases and raising kids in a fat-phobic world. Okay, what about childhood obesity is a myth? Those are the facts. I mean, here's an article about it. Pulled this up in three seconds. Obesity rates continue to climb among U.S. kids and teens. They are literally prescribing children meds now to lose weight because children in America are so fat. Fat guy in a little coat. That is not a myth. 
scientists and doctors saying children are overwhelmingly overweight is not fat phobia. And the way to address that is not fixing and unlearning your fat phobic biases. The way to fix it is getting your kids off your phones, making them go outside and play and stop making 90% of their diet processed sugar and crap. That's the way to fix it. She's not trying to fix childhood obesity. She's literally trying to make kids fatter by unlearning biases. That's absurd. How is this a legitimate book? But anyway, now that you know more of what we've gotten ourselves into, let's move on. She also says, obviously, white supremacy is trying to maintain the power structure. So celebrating a thin white body as the ideal body is a way to other and demonize black and brown bodies, bigger bodies than anyone who doesn't fit into that norm. So this is really about maintaining systems of white supremacy and patriarchy. If you can understand that actually, by continuing to pursue thinness, you are in some level maintaining your complicity with white supremacy and the patriarchy. So not only are you fat phobic if you work out, but you are also a racist. Because in order to be an ally, you have to be fat. Because if you're thin, you're upholding some system of power. I think the only system of power that you're upholding is being able to rely on your body and be healthy and be a empowered individual. But apparently that's the worst thing in the world these days. This is basically an author just regurgitating terrible TikTok takes, but we are seeing this as legitimate because it's in a real book. Like, just listen, these are the same things that this author is saying. There's another book about it. How is fat phobia linked to white supremacy? Congratulations, class. That's a great question. If you want to learn more than what I mentioned here today, please read this book. book. Fat phobia, like most social phobias, is ultimately the cause of systemic oppression. Fat bodies have been racialized since, you guessed it, slavery. Fat phobia stems from an Enlightenment era belief that fatness is actually linked to savagery and racial inferiority, which has then subsequently been used to subjugate black bodies into slave labor, exploitation, fetishization, and sexualization. Slave masters use the fatness found in black female bodies as an excuse to say, those women are deserving of rape, but you, your slender self, you're not. Since abolition, the U.S. government has tried to pin the obesity epidemic and all comorbid diseases like heart disease and diabetes on blackness and on the black population as a way to say our healthcare system is overwhelmed by those people and those are your tax paying dollars. Fat phobia, white supremacy. There you have it. What is... <laughs> that literally did not mean anything at all. You were just pulling random social justice warrior words out of thin air in order to make your argument as intersectional and victimized as possible. Also, it's very odd because if we're gonna bring history into this, for most of history, people that were a little more overweight were seen as, you know, beautiful and powerful and wealthy. I mean, think about those Renaissance paintings. Those women were not tiny and skinny. Like that's a new thing that we're doing. And yet you're claiming that black people being fat was a part of your oppression. Like it just does not make sense. Here's another one. Hi, this is your reminder that fat phobia and weight stigma are rooted in white supremacy and sexism. In the 1800s, the idea of social Darwinism became popular, essentially creating hierarchies of different kinds of people. This work was mainly done by white Northern European men who wanted to prove that white Northern European men were the best kinds of people. So they began to fixate on traits that belonged to people who they thought were lesser kinds of people. So people of color, particularly women of color. They observed that women of color, particularly black women, tended to weigh more. So they perpetuated the idea that it's better to be thin because thinness is closer to whiteness and masculinity. This isn't something that I'm making up. This is stuff that is quite literally in the science of the time period. Yet we constantly perpetuate these ideas. Everything about that annoyed me. Everything. It was like nails on a chalkboard. I don't even know where to begin with that. Like, I don't care about, oh God. In today's world, we know that being healthy, that working out, that going to the gym, that not being morbidly obese is healthy, that is objectively better for you. I don't care about any of your social arguments you're gonna make about history or any of that crap. You can concern yourself with that on your own time based on the facts, the science, TM. We know that there is one way that you can for sure be a lot healthier and it's losing weight. Like, that's not some new information. But back to the article. 
Soul Smith also argued that fat people experience a similar form of stigma as those who live under the thumb of racism or other forms of bias. The author said that society's disgust of fat people results in daily implicit bias or outright prejudice. Quote, this raises your stress levels and has you in a constant state of fight or flight and stress hormones are elevated. That takes a toll on our bodies. This is how we ask that people move through the world, always on guard, knowing that they may be ridiculed, shamed, stigmatized. That takes a toll on our mental health and our physical health. Okay, you know what also <laughs> takes a toll on your mental and physical health? Being incredibly overweight. It's a hard harsh truth, but that is reality. So if your mental and physical health is a serious concern for you, and this author is obviously saying that it is, because she wouldn't be making that argument if it wasn't, then maybe you should start with losing some weight. It's just a thought. Maybe you could focus on your physical health if you care so much about your physical and your mental health. I mean, like I showed you all, this is literally the crap that we hear on TikTok on a daily basis. But now it's coming in the form of this parenting book, which inherently makes it more legitimate and credible, especially because it's being published by Henry Holt Co., which is one of the oldest and most well-respected American publishers. They are publishing crap like this. This is not fringe. It's not just crazy teenagers on TikTok. These are academics peddling this. They want us to be fat and lazy and compliant, and they have somehow indoctrinated a whole part of the population to be the champions of that. Like, it's wrong, objectively. We should be striving to be healthy, to always be bettering ourselves, to be independent, to be able to rely on your body, which is a lot easier to do when you are in shape. That is real empowerment, not any of that crap. Okay, that was fun, and those people are crazy. If you want to see more videos like that, make sure you subscribe to this channel and like that video, and if you want even more content, you can follow me on Instagram at I'm Brett Cooper.